Hello, my name is John Curley. I uh, live in Ward 4 at Porcupine behind the Porcupine Mall, and uh, I've been a lifelong resident of the east end of the city of Timmins. Um, built the house in 1988 behind the Porcupine Mall. Been on council uh, in the past, and uh, I, uh, since that time, uh, I've been asked to sit on a number of boards. I sit on the chair of the city of Timmins, non public housing. Sit on the police board, sit on the committee adjustments, along with some other service groups uh, on the wall the city. I've been quite active, I believe. Uh, I've always have been. I've been a Porcupine Kinsman member, life member of that, uh, honorary member of the of the Rotary Club, a life member of Ontario Good Roads. I mean, I've been very active in, in all my years, even prior to getting on the council. So it's not something new to me to be involved in the community. The reason I'm running, I, I do have a few issues that I don't believe the city is. Um, we've approached the city, or these companies, or these organizations have approached the city on a few subjects, and uh, they were just ignored as far as I'm concerned. And I thought that uh, at least I could have done is um, followed through and found out a little bit more information, but that never happened. Um, so I thought, okay, I mean, if there's a possible savings, uh, anyone on this, with my involvement, really, I think I'm well known across the city for my involvement. Uh, you know, to help out people, whether it's Canada, Scotia, Carby C, uh, way down in the Frederick Hills, Barbers Bay, it, it doesn't matter. You're a councillor, you're a councillor for the whole city. Yes, you represent that board because they're the people who need you in. But at the same time, you were there for the whole city, not just your section. Yeah, I have 24 years of service uh, with the, being a city councillor, and, and say through that I've managed to uh, uh, the province, and these colleagues across the province, uh, voted me in as the president of Ontario for Roads, which is quite an establishment. The, uh, the only other person here in the city of Timmins ever got to that level was uh, the, the past uh, mayor, Leo Vienna. Nobody else has ever accomplished that. So I, I feel quite honored that the, the people across the province did support me in my endeavors and uh, it's worked out quite well. One issue, and, and you heard lots of it when they first start to out, is when they switched over the, to the LED lighting, street lighting program, which is a great idea. I mean, I give the credit to, to the city for doing such a thing. I've been involved working and in trying to find out what was going to be the best. LED lighting. I went to a lot of the companies, talked to one and else. The unfortunate part that took place this time, and it was really a sore point on me, uh, one company did a presentation, and they are owned by a number of municipalities of Ontario that own this company for LED lighting. They went to council, they come up here, they made a presentation to council. To me, that fell on deaf ears because immediately after their presentation, the real-time presentation took part right after that, and they went with them. Now, the bad part about that is that the LED lighting that they went with, uh, the lighting is a Cree product. Cree products are made in China, and the distributor that they purchased their signs through, or that the LED lights through, is out of the States. So, there is a company here in Westburn, here in the city of Timmins, that sells pre product lighting. And the, the other part is that they sell Philips. Philips is a Canadian um, company. So, what the city did, uh, allowed this company to do, is purchase pre lighting, not locally, but they purchased it all from the States. So all the money for LED lighting in the city went to an American company who purchased it from the state or from China. And I'm thinking, like, first of all, we could have, if that's the product you wanted, you could have bought it local. So it would have been hundreds of thousands of dollars that could have stayed locally. Or buy, uh, buy Canadian products. Philips, support Canadian. The other issue I had in companies flew in, Concrete Canada, come to tenants. We have companies from down in southern Ontario come to Timmins. We have the local companies here all went to council to make a presentation on why 
the city should look at doing concrete hiring. That section that's already been done, you see it's probably eight inches, some people say it's a foot of asphalt, there's a lot of asphalt that's put down there. Now, in Manitoba, which has a colder climate than us, southern Ontario, their highways, they're all going to concrete. One thing about here, in that section that was done, that could have been easily done because there's no infrastructure underneath it. When you get to the street, like if you go on Gunkwood, then with all the info it is going to be costly. So, but can you do sections of the highway in concrete? Like one, once upon a time, many years ago, there was concrete highways in a lot of areas. But Manitoba has proven it, Southern Ontario has proven it, concrete highways work. So when they made the presentation to council saying that would you at least put that on your your bid, the tenure? So you can get your asphalt bid and you can get a concrete dirt and see what what is going to be uh, better for the city, longevity of, of the product, and the cost. And no disrespect to Miller who has a company here, but Miller also does concrete and they were at that meeting also. So all of a sudden you have one asphalt company here that bids on an asphalt highway, or you could have a dozen concrete companies built, because you can build a, a set up a batch pot easily. So all these other guys from out of town come up to Timmins because they're interested in this um, possible uh, bid if they get a chance to put it on the tender, and nothing. It went strictly asphalt. So then council turned around and complains the price is too high for asphalt, and then they say, well, it's because nobody else bid against them. Yeah, but you didn't want to go outside the box. You didn't want to go and find out, is there some other way of doing this? And it's not that concrete is something to do. And if the other cities and provinces have done it, why would you not at least explore it and get a price to do some comparisons that now you've got a dozen people bidding versus the other one. Uh, I think there could have been some savings. We'll never know. We'll never know because the sections that are being done are the sections that could have been concrete. Pros and cons, and I think both have their merits. But I've been there and, and worked with both, and I, and I found, and I honestly believe, that most of the counselors, they, they try to find fault. And they're finding fault with the system that's presently there. If they're not taking part in the committee of the whole meetings, uh, they're not asking the questions behind the scenes. Every question doesn't have to go to a public meeting. Questions can be asked, the doors are there. Knock on them, go and see your department that you have concerns with or issues with, go and see them. And then you'll see that a lot of things will smooth, uh, flow smoother than trying to make it a country where everybody has to be brought into the public and we're going to be talking about this person and that person. I don't like that kind of way. We've operated for many, many years of getting a lot of things done. And yet, uh, you don't have that. You know, you're going to get issues at the table. Uh, I had many issues. We had yelling matches that went on. That's not going to go away. But at the same time, I think most of the issues can be done in an office versus trying to make yourself grandstand at a public council meeting going after an individual or a department. I've been down there, I've seen what I've seen on the shoreline, it is disgusting. Yeah, it is disgusting. And normally, you would, you'd be so happy to have a lake in your community that you could build a cottage on and get something around it. These people here building a cottage or something around the lake. It's surprising there's any places around that I would not have property on that lake. But to walk down to my dock and see everything floating around us, no, nobody is saying what's got to be done. The East End is part of the city. This isn't an East End issue. This is a city issue. It's a provincial issue. And it's a federal issue because of the waterways. We dredged Porcupine River out right down in Adhoc many, many, many years ago. And it did a beautiful job on it. But we lost control of it again. It has to be done. It's filled in, it's weeds, you can't take a boat down there. Um, 
natural waterways and we've destroyed it. Do we have to tear those tanks down? Maybe we should be looking at treatment. And, and help the Whitney plant out with their treatment. Maybe reverse the flows. Build the treatment plant so everything from South End can go to the treatment plant. And let's pump it the other way from Porcupine to this major treatment plant. So we'd have the one that's, uh, and it doesn't have to be a big one, too much difference. That's a huge treatment plant, but it's, it's also for you know, tens of thousands of people more than it is. So we wasted all that money on what we've done so far. Maybe team to take the next step and build a treatment plant that can be good for both. And, and slowly start getting evenly involved like the lagoon, bumping it up towards this treatment plant and get rid of everything else. I'd like to see that. I mean, as much as I'd love to see a, a new pool or a twin pad arena and all this, this is something that the, uh, affects your lives, it affects your uh, the, the, the animals, it, it affects the community. Because what are you reading or what are you hearing from Facebook to emails? Uh, it doesn't matter. People across this province, across Canada, have seen and heard the issues that we're having. And we're not getting it done. And uh, they have to put this uh, as a first priority of this new council. It's unfortunate it fell to the tax for the last one. And this time it's not going to happen. Part of the living out there is part of their expenses of maintaining the city. So if we turn around and said that uh, anybody, uh, part of that, part of your taxes towards the towards, uh, library. Well, we don't have a library. So take that off my taxes because Timmins has a library, or Southern has a library. So you can't start picking and choosing. You have to turn around and, and put a, a tax bill up there that everybody Days, but what can you do to help them with, with their situation? Right? And I think that that's an area that has to be done, a rural area roads program, and, and as to what level, but they might have already uh, opened the door that you can't do it any other way now, but bring it to all roads to standard. The first year uh, it was quite unique, and in the beginning, the, the country's 150th birthday, all that, um, and, and I think the city wanted to be not one of the ones that stood out in the country is what we're going to do. Uh, the, the fireworks, uh, to have day after day fireworks uh, displayed, that's never been done. So a lot of unique things were going to take place. Unfortunately, uh, the weather, uh, winds and whatnot really affects uh, whether you can have fireworks. So that, that part of it, of no fault of anybody's, that, that, that fell, uh, didn't work out the way we thought it was going to work out. To bring that caliber of any team to the city of Timmins for that first year, um, they, they, they did an awesome job. Yes, there was money lost. Did the, did the city get recognized um, across Canada and further? What took place and, and the people still talked about it. So it was good. This year, not so much. It should have been another eight days. No. I had said that right from the get go. Not for this year. First year, you're kind of all involved, and it, it, it seemed to be really good. Ticket sales seemed to take off. And all that. This year, not as much. I mean, I don't believe really, we uh, really had the big caliber of entertainers, and I don't know if that would have made a difference. Either. Is there a smaller version that we could put on? Obviously we know we did attract some people from out of town for the eight day festivals. We might not attract them uh, for a smaller scale one. But we're providing something for entertainment for not only the city of Timmins but the surrounding areas to come to, um, to Timmins and, and take part in this three or four day weekend. It's a long weekend and we're going to do something regardless. So add on to it, who can get involved with it, who can. You don't need the, the, the extreme that we went, which is the big dollars. I really think the Stars and Thunder has been taken over this election and everybody's trying to find the negative parts in this. Uh, the first year was a learning, and I thought this year it might have got changed, and it didn't. So the, the learning curve going forward I believe everybody has said the same thing. Uh, a lot smaller scale, a lot 
Scouts homes here. And um, what the negativity on this, and I know my name has been brought in on this too. People that were on that list, every single one of them, like one, uh, was licensed. So how can you dare say that David Wilder Wiseman's company only had six people licensed? The response? Well, I was told, this guy told me there's only six there. Oh, so this guy must know everything and he knows who's got what, was the gospel truth. Well, obviously I, I showed that it wasn't. But what's come out of that? Nothing. $14,000 for food? It was a line item that council agreed to pay David. Out of the overall contract, there was money allocated for food. To go to a contract, an overall contract, and take a line item out of there and make it a story, I mean, that's, that's wrong. Again, what were they trying to do? Discredit David Wiseman's company for unlicensed people, which was proven that they were licensed, which damages the reputation of a company like that who does fireworks all over. And then for myself being, well, the check was given to John Kirby. Yes, the check was given to me because these guys aren't in town. I have to get that site prepared. So the check was given, it was put into a special account, which was David's money, as far as book. And things were purchased from that. And he has all um, what cost, because I mean, it wasn't my money, not the city's money. The city doesn't have to get receipts for it because it was part of the overall contract. So then you, you give David what the costs were, provide him with everything, and if there's any money left over, here you go. If there's not, this is the way it goes. That's the way of doing business. But for those two, Rick Hugo and Joe Kenny, to select things out without following through and question in a phone call, but go on there and say that this is what it is, and the guy told me, well, this guy is telling you and is telling anybody else out there that it, it's, it's part of the contract, this is the way it's done. If they want to talk to me, I will talk to anybody. But what they put out there in the media about David Wallace's company and people on that list to discredit them that went out, took a course, paid money to get their license, to say that they weren't licensed because of this so-called guy um, and, and, and run with the truth like that and, and get the, the attention. I, I, I have trouble with that. I, it really bothered me. I will work with anybody. I am not one who's going to pick and choose. There is some uh, between the mayors that are running. I got no issues. Uh, I'm not picking one or the other because I will work whoever is there. There is some council members that are running, or candidates, I should say. Um, I prefer that they not be there. I want council members that can have a difference of opinion, that can still work together and move on. Many years I've sat there, and many times um, I fought for something, and I lost it. I got outvoted, and we move on. At the end of the night, you know, might have shook hands, we might have went for coffee, and it was over and done with. You leave that at the table. Even though uh, I wasn't on council this last four years, I stayed active on, on city um, committees and stayed active in the community because that, that never ever stopped other than not going to council meetings. I would still, and I still do, get phone calls for issues that are going on in the city of Timmins. And I've always told the people that you should contact your council. And the comments coming back was, I never, they never returned my phone calls, they never did this, they never did that. So then, I had a few residents in the ward floor that had called me over some issues. I did exactly what I just said nothing to come back out of it. So I made my personal phone calls um, to, to the, the area counselor and those phone calls were not returned. 
And I'm thinking, well, it's part of the job. Sometimes you're not always available to take a phone call, but that's good. But return to your calls. All calls are not going to be rosy. You will have to take good from the bad. And most of the time, people not calling you to, to wish you a happy birthday. They're, they're calling you for, for other issues. When I first got on council, I would get calls at 2 in the morning. And the reason I got a call at 2 in the morning, because the guys just closed the bar. They had some great ideas sitting there drinking, and they had to share it with me at 2 in the morning, even though I had to go to work for 5. So I said, okay, I'm going to put my name forward and see if the people want somebody who is actually involved in the community and being involved with me, not only at election time. And I see that so often, people come out and, um, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You've only done that this year. It's election time, so you're doing what you're doing. I'm sitting on this committee, I'm sitting on that. You haven't done that forever. I think the people that work for it, uh, or throughout the city, uh, no one there for them. I mean, I'm not a, uh, I'm definitely living in, in Port Pine area. They know that I represent them. I have represented the East End for many years. I've been involved trying to put activities on and, and build things down in the East End. I help people across this community, across the city. So I'm there to, to help people. I'm not there because it's every Tuesday night or every second Tuesday night just for a meeting. There's more to this job than, than a meeting. There's work to be done behind the scenes. So I think if they put their vote on me on Monday, October 22nd, we'll start the East Tuesday moving forward in 2000.